All right, testing, testing, one, two, welcome to the 719, another day of, and we got all the pics from the town hall. So this guy, the tall guy standing up, this is the dude that's involved in all the media relations that go over the City Hall channel. He's rocking around, handing everybody the microphone. Quite interesting guy. He's very useful. That this is census year in April is really when you guys have to start paying attention to... Uh making sure that you guys are getting in for the count. So I know there's some information back there with the Citizens Project. Wave your hand and, uh, and, and please learn a little bit more on that end of things. We do have a uh, quick video that we want to start off with. This doesn't look like a rambunctious crowd, so I'll just quickly say we're going to respect you, so please respect us. We're going to have a mic that we're going to go around with as well. Um, and, and then that way I'll kind of go between people um, try to hit everybody, which I think tonight I should be able to hit everybody. So, uh, so there shouldn't be any worries there. Uh, we're going to start off with a quick video, and I'll try to introduce it. Yolanda, if you yell at me if you want to say anything extra. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is uh, about a Circle Bridge project, and actually we have a, we have a man of the hour here. He, Ryan should really be the one that, uh, that introduces this. But um, The dude with the suit... And the glasses standing up to next to the utilities board, Gold Guy, Miss Avila, and then Mr. Scorman, which you all know. That dude is responsible for making sure this city looks pretty by video. Hope y'all think I do better. Peace. And so, will the bus be going out to the Amazon warehouse? Yes, I think that's, that's going to really happen this year. And that, by the way, is. Thousand jobs. It might might be more like three thousand jobs, um, and and so I think that's going to be a real value. And, and I personally would love to see that connection to the southeast as well, because I think that's where a lot of job uh, seekers are going to be. Yeah, and that's what we've all talked about. That's why I say it'll be through southeast to downtown to uh, um, to Amazon for the workers. I mean, let's face it, that it'll we'll go to the airport. Right, for people that use it, but most people talk about that uh, enterprise. Uh, what's it called? The, uh, enterprise zone? It's not the enterprise zone, uh, the district. No, the, but the, this, the complex, what's it called? Uh, the, the airport. Uh, it has a name, but I don't that's right, we're talking about Miss Yolanda Avila in her own hood, District 4. So this is the whole area that matters in life. This is the hood of the 719 of poor people, and that's the reason why she's the best candidate on this place. Uh, i got to turn this over to her. This center is so vital to the community here, and it brings so much to the community. And the people that, like Brian, who, who runs it, and the staff, really committed to this, this community. So this community is not only staying, but we will look at ways of enhancing it as well. And Kim, do you want to talk about this a while? Kim, Kim King is here, who is kind of in charge of our community centers for the park department. Do you, do you want to make a comment as well? Good evening again. Thank you for being here this evening. In terms of the community centers, we have uh, Meadows Park here. We also have one in Deerfield Hills. We have the Hillside Community Center and also over at Westside. And, and they do serve a really, truly unique niche, if you will, in terms of services sometimes for these local communities. They're always looking at how else they can serve the communities. They, they work with the communities as things change and other services come into play. They look at ways to do that. We do it so much with partnerships. That is huge for all of the centers. Brian does a great job with finding our partner organizations, such as the Pikes Peak Library District. Uh, and, and we will continue to do that as we move forward. Uh, again, we have definitely rebounded from 2010 uh, when we looked at potentially closing the centers down. And it's still at times a stretch. And we are very, uh, very ingenious again in how we sometimes put the pieces together. But we will continue to do that and look for ways of improving as we move forward. Now realize that the guy, the bald guy that's in a suit up in front with Ms. Villa and also Mr. Scorman who's on the mic right now talking, that's the CEO to the board of Colorado Springs Utilities. That's the guy with Martin Drake. So along the way, realize every time he comes up to me to say hello, 
at City Council. I can't help but think, are you trying to be friends with me or just trying to cozy up to me? Because he's like Wade Williams and I. We're never going to see eye to eye. But the town is afraid to flip the switch. So along the way, anyways, I figured I'd throw that out real quick that, and let Chard finish what he's doing. There's going to be an affordable housing complex uh, uh, on the other side of Roll School. Uh, 281 units that we just approved. Yeah, and that's going to be, uh, th that's going to help some. The Greenway is going to happen uh, that you were talking about. It just hasn't happened yet. So that, that is going to happen. I don't know about that. I think the auto is, is part of all that because there's going to be a Greenway down. Yeah, uh, the Maverick. Uh, store and you may not have fond feelings for that that we allow that but one of the purposes of, of that store was that they were they were going to invest in, in that greenway uh, down there that they uh, they promised to take care of all the uh, stormwater flooding problems and issues and, and then if you think about campers village uh, you know that area there it's not the same Elmo, uh, but down further uh, that, that's going to be a whole, hopefully a whole green uh, area. It, it's heavily wooded. It, it has a lot of uh, potential for the parks department. And uh, it will connect to that Shooks Run Trail, the Legacy Loop. And so that, that's going to be another part of it. I can't tell you what we're planning for Dorchester Park yet, but uh, we know we know that it's not a park that's, that's easily used. Everybody's just gone up and down South Creek. I walk down, my husband and I walk down South Creek sometimes for Birdman, yeah. behind utility stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's gotten really packed for Sunday. I know. It's a real question. No, no, I know, I know. And Dorchester's got a huge problem with the police department. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, more calls to service, more, you know, oh, yeah. all, the all the time. And so we are, we are going to try to really address uh, Dorchester. But I wish I could tell you exactly what's going to happen when, but, but these are all good points that you're bringing up. And uh, hopefully we'll. But what, what uh, we know is there's going to be 1,800 new affordable units built uh, over the next year uh, that are going to be available, not all down here, but, uh, but uh, around the city. But what we've been talking about a lot at uh, the city and utilities is how we can figure out how to uh, incent more affordable housing to be built. So there, there, are, there are issues with uh, how we uh, we, char we charge for utilities, how we hook them up. There's issues about whether the city has land that we can help uh, donate uh, or, or be a part of uh, contributing to make these more affordable. The marketplace will build it if we have the ability to, uh, to, to, to pay for it. And then uh, Yolanda probably has some thoughts about it too. Also, I don't know if you've heard of the Solid Rock Foundation. It, it's a church in south of here off the circle, and they are going to build some workforce housing in that area, like 200 units of workforce housing, which uh, they're donating that land to, to build that. So we're working on projects throughout southeast, but I'd like to see these projects throughout the whole city so that the affordable housing or workforce housing or low-income housing doesn't all get um, saturated here, but uh -huh. that it's throughout the entire city. Yeah, well, I don't know if you want to talk about Dorchester Park, also known as the top end of Murder Row. Springs Rescue Mission Area. Come and go. What can I say? That's the way the 7 1 Ryan rolls. I'm heartbroken about Dorchester Park. That we used to go hang out there all the time. It was the closest park that you know that we could go to. So and I we see what's happening, but and things seem to happen at a snail's pace, right? That we are moving forward. And there are exciting things happening. You know, with with the, uh, uh, the Olympic Museum. We did a tour of that. That is incredible. And uh, what's going on with the Robeson Arena and just the activity and the downtown. We're going to have such a robust downtown. And I do anticipate and I do fight for this area and, and further east too to, to bring that, to bring that. 
uh, to, to our area as well. But, uh, we've got something in utilities I've been talking with Adam about, and he's going to talk about it on a higher level, but uh, something that I've been um, asking for and seeing what we could do in terms of partnering with utility about jobs and, and, and good wages. So Miss Ovila turns around and says the new Olympics Museum from what they've toured is just fantastic and awesome. I sure hope so for as long as we've waited to see it. <laughs> On the street constantly. And we, we have kids here all day long and to have that warning would be a ben would be a benefit not only to the community but to the pedestrians of this community. Yeah, no, especially here from our there's a person in the back, Sam, Sam Friedman. But, uh, let him know how to get a hold of him, and he'll follow up with you in terms of uh, what you're talking about. We can see what you're talking about, and uh, let's get together with a restaurant or the or maybe a crosswalk or, or a blinking light or something okay. like that. that. That's a really good thing to talk about. Yeah, we really do need these signs that I'm about to show you in this next clip real sec quick. We need these signs in every single neighborhood in this town just because everybody doesn't want to listen to the factor of slow down. There's pedestrians out there and they have the right of way. But those that passed their driver's test probably already knew that, right? article in the Gazette the other day about the homeless population. There's two people killed or from this area. From 25 down. From the park down. So just be super careful. There's been a ton of accidents in this, in this area. So it's very sad. Very sad. <laughs> I just, I just had to throw this in one last, last little quick moment. <laughs> Through this whole video as I edit, I had just happened to notice that the only guy that's just also thrilled to be at this meeting above all people to answer those questions is the is Colorado Springs, you know, CEO of the Public Utilities. He's just seeming so thrilled to be there. <laughs> well, we know who's got problems. There's 30% of the fatality and the injury of what's going on. And so uh, the state recently, I'm on the Pike Peak Area um, Rural Transit Authority and the Pike Peak Area um, Council of Governments. And right now for the state, the goal is... Yeah, Yolanda, that's the woman with the hood. That's the woman that's worth every bit of our city council time. I wish we uh, had done that a long time ago. There's a there was a, a tax that was in place in 1992. It was a half cent sales tax, uh, and then 1992 is when Tabor passed and you know Doug, Doug Bruce and that whole business. And that's we took that away. Uh, basically, uh, it was something that uh, was for this purpose that we could keep up with our roads and really be able to maintain them as time went on. 
And, and it, it wasn't really until the, uh, the PPRTA, which is the Pikes Peak Rural Transit Authority, was voted on in, uh, I think it was about 2010 was the first time it was voted on that we started to get some funding for roads. But uh, it, it's been a real difficult challenge to try to come up with the difference between what we should have been doing all along and what we need to do now. So 2C raises about 50, 55 million dollars a year. It's significant, uh, but we have 14,000 miles of roads in Colorado Springs. And uh, we, we uh, had, uh, we, we had uh, a, a great challenge to come up with enough to be able to do this. And, and then it's hard, and Ron can probably explain this, it's even hard to find construction crews and materials these days because there's so much other construction happening in the region. But uh, we, uh, we felt really positive about what we did for the first five years of 2C. We paved about a thousand miles of roads. We also put in all the sidewalks and cur cur Now I got to say kudos out to the Meadows Park Community Center. That was a really awesome building, really awesome little place. Set right down in Miss Avila's hood. And when I mean by hood, by her neck of the woods, this is her area. So mind you, yeah, I want to say kudos because like that was a really awesome community center. I really liked it and I'm glad to hear it's going to stay at all costs.